Welcome to Mega 10. I am Monica. And I am David. A quick reminder, please give us a like, hit the bell, and subscribe to our channel. You can also join the VIP front row to get early access to all our upcoming videos. Thank you for being here and supporting us. Okay, David. When we decided to tackle this topic, I knew it was going to be intense. Because the way AI is reshaping blockchain security is not just a technical shift, it's an existential shift for anything built around smart contracts. And suddenly, the decisions chains made 10 years ago about programmability, execution environment, consensus design, those are now becoming the deciding factors between survivability and collapse. You're right, Monica. And what's wild is that every time people talk about AI risk in crypto, they focus on scams or deepfake phishing. But the real battlefield is the invisible one, the battle between deterministic systems that lock down attack surfaces and probabilistic systems that expose a wider and wider surface area as AI models become cheaper, faster, and more autonomous. And that's where the XRPL architecture shows up with an advantage people underestimated for a decade. And the funny thing is, XRPL wasn't designed with AI adversarial threats in mind. It simply chose determinism for reliability, constrained programmability for predictability, and an account-based model because it was cleaner for payments. But now that AI can run millions of state simulations for the cost of a coffee, those choices are suddenly looking incredibly forward-thinking. It's like XRPL by accident positioned itself as a defensive fortress in an era where defensive architecture is the only viable path for institutional settlement. If you look at what the frontier models are doing, you can see the shift clearly. AI agents that can autonomously discover re-entrancy patterns, logic flaws in smart contracts, missing access control, or multi-step exploit sequences that chain together five or six contracts on an EVM chain. And the cost of doing this has plummeted. Running an automated exploit search used to cost tens of thousands. Now it's around the price of a weekend takeaway. When that threshold drops, the maths behind defense changes completely. And on an EVM chain, every new contract adds to the combinational attack graph. One lending protocol plus one AMM plus one Oracle plus one proxy upgrade pattern doesn't equal four components. It equals hundreds of possible paths an AI can traverse. And that's why the EVM ecosystem is seeing a growing blast radius. Every new DeFi primitive doesn't just increase TVL, it increases the risk surface. AI thrives in that environment. Meanwhile, XRKL refuses to allow arbitrary logic at the settlement layer. The ledger itself defines the behaviors. Payments behave a certain way. Offers in the DEX behave according to rules baked into Rippled. Escrows follow predictable paths. Checks behave predictably. The state transitions are not user-defined, they're protocol-defined. And that's exactly what makes the environment so hostile to AI exploit discovery. Because the ledger isn't a sandbox for imagination, it's a fixed, deterministic machine. And let's be honest, David, deterministic execution is becoming more valuable than raw throughput. It doesn't matter if a chain can do insane TPS, if the settlement finality is probabilistic and vulnerable to reorgs. Because when AI-driven MEV bots can simulate whether reordering the last few blocks can yield a profitable reorg, we're in a world where the probability of settlement instability is no longer theoretical. Exactly. Even institutional settlement desks are starting to realize that you don't want execution to be unpredictable when AI is scanning every mempool and every cross-chain interaction. On XRPL, a transaction either makes it into a closed ledger or it doesn't. There's no mempool chaos, no reorg ambiguity, no validators deciding transaction ordering based on gas bidding wars. That's why deterministic finality isn't just a nice to have, it's a regulatory requirement in the making. Speaking of regulators, they're starting to understand that exploit probability isn't just a security issue, it's a financial stability issue and they are shifting toward architecture-based classification. When they look at XRPL, what they see is a closed set of operations, deterministic finality, known validators through the UNL, predictable costs, and programmability that's intentionally bounded. That profile fits the way financial regulators think, especially when AI lowers the barrier to exploitation. And that's exactly the reason RLUSD's regulatory pathway has been so smooth. When compliance logic is at the protocol layer instead of the contract layer, regulators don't have to worry about whether each instance of a stablecoin contract is correctly implemented. They only need to approve the protocol once. And then everything issued on top of that protocol inherits the same compliance guarantees. It's predictable, auditable, and enforceable. 
AI can't break the compliance model because it isn't a contract to bypass, it's a protocol rule. What's also interesting is the difference between hooks and traditional smart contracts. Hooks are tiny, bounded, deterministic WASM snippets. They cannot run unbounded loops, they cannot mutate the global ledger arbitrarily, they cannot summon other contracts, they cannot recursively call themselves, they are literally constrained in a way that makes them fully auditable and fully exhaustible for AI fuzzing. And the more bounded something is, the easier it is to secure. On the other hand, every Solidity contract on an EVM chain is a potential new exploit surface. AI agents don't just look for known vulnerabilities, they look for behavioral anomalies. They simulate economic intent. They compare a contract's expected behavior with its implemented behavior. And once the attack surface is that large, the economics of defense break down. A lending protocol storing billions simply cannot rely on human auditors anymore. This is why the institutional world is heading toward deterministic networks like XRPL for settlement and using EVM environments as isolated execution layers. The XRPL EVM sidechain is a perfect example of this architectural separation. Innovation, experimentation, and DeFi activity can happen on the sidechain. If something goes wrong there, it is contained. The sidechain can suffer an exploit without touching XRPL mainnet. The bridge packs like a sealed chamber with monitored flow. And containment is the entire game in a multi-chain world, because as AI models become more autonomous, cross-chain contagion becomes the biggest systemic risk. The idea of an AI agent identifying a multi-chain exploit path, hopping across bridges, abusing mismatched invariants, exploiting timing differences, and draining value across three or four networks in sequence is not science fiction. It's a forecast. But because XRPL mainnet doesn't execute arbitrary code, the number of cross-chain contagion vectors drops massively. An exploit on the EVM sidechain doesn't rewrite XRPL mainnet. The bridge ensures that the sidechain's EXRP cannot exceed the locked XRP on mainnet. Even in a collapse scenario, XRPL retains integrity. And deterministic finality means you can identify the exact last legitimate state before any attack spread. And that's exactly why agencies, central banks, and institutional infrastructure teams are gravitating toward deterministic ledgers for CBDC settlement. They don't want rollbacks. They don't want consensus ambiguity. They don't want mempool wars. They want predictable finality. And AI is forcing them to re-evaluate everything. Suddenly, programmability isn't the hero narrative. Predictability is. Just a reminder, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And also don't forget, there is a front row seat waiting for you. Join us here at the VIP area. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. The fascinating part is how rating agencies are starting to evaluate ledgers not based on marketing narratives, but based on quantifiable security metrics. And AI is making those metrics measurable. Exploit probability, attack surface density, execution determinism, state predictability, composability risk. When you score chains by those dimensions, a pattern emerges instantly. The deterministic ledgers move to the top. XRPL sits in the low volatility category because its architecture doesn't expose probabilistic behaviors. It doesn't have reentrancy. It doesn't have unlimited function calls. It doesn't have combinational multi-contract pathways. AI can scan an entire XRPL environment far faster because the number of possible logic paths is tiny. That is the definition of a high assurance system. And ironically, this is why DeFi insurance becomes nearly impossible to sustain on EVM chains as AI improves. The expected loss grows as exploit probability grows. If the frequency of exploits jumps tenfold, the cost of insurance skyrockets. Eventually, insurance becomes more expensive than the yield. That's when institutional liquidity leaves. It exits the high-risk programmable layer and chooses deterministic settlement rails. And we're already seeing hints of this. Insurers increasing premiums, protocols realizing they can't just rely on manual audits, validators facing increased pressure to reduce uncertainty, platforms like XRPL becoming the fallback rail during systemic events. When an EVM network suffers congestion spike or a smart contract exploit cascade, institutions route settlement through deterministic rails. It's the only option. What's powerful about XRPL's design is that AI can be used defensively too. Validators can run anomaly detection on their local copies of the network. They can spot unusual transaction patterns or emerging spam attacks. They can detect consensus behavior deviations. They can forecast potential validator unavailability. And with deterministic logic, anomalies are far easier to detect because there is no unpredictable state explosion. And in the future, AI could even participate in automated patching for sidechains. Imagine a world where the sidechain is continuously fuzzed, continuously scanned, and any vulnerability discovered triggers an automated governance response. A patch is generated, validators review it, and it gets deployed quickly enough to stop cascading failures. 
That's only possible if the sidechain architecture supports isolation from the mainnet. And here's the deeper point, Monica. AI makes complexity dangerous. And XRPL's greatest strength is that it rejects unnecessary complexity at its core. It keeps settlement clean. It keeps operations finite. It keeps programmability contained. And that is exactly the kind of chain you want when AI agents can weaponize complexity in ways humans never could. That's why when we look ahead at institutional settlement, CBDC bridges, tokenized treasuries, regulated stablecoins, and cross-jurisdictional liquidity flows, everything is pointing toward deterministic rails as the anchor layer. You can innovate on sidechains, you can experiment in sandboxes, but when actual high-value finality is on the line, nobody wants probabilistic systems anymore. And that includes rating agencies. They will eventually classify chains by predictability. And when that happens, XRPL enters the low volatility, high assurance category. Ethereum falls into high variability, high risk categories. And institutions will be forced by governance rules to allocate differently. No one wants to justify holding reserves on an unpredictable settlement network once regulators formalize these frameworks. We also have to mention how AI is forcing a shift in economic modeling. When the cost of exploit discovery drops, the expected exploit frequency rises. And once that frequency crosses a certain threshold, capital begins migrating to more secure environments. This isn't about ideology. It's basic math. If risk premiums increase, capital reallocates. And that reallocation tends to favor deterministic architecture. XRPL fits that mold perfectly. It's more capital efficient. It's cheaper to insure. It's easier to audit. It's more predictable under stress. It offers clearer finality. And it offers compliance controls at the protocol level, not through fragile smart contracts. And in the future, DeFi on XRPL will evolve too. The AMM changes the liquidity dynamics. Hooks will allow tailored logic. Sidechains will support experimentation. CBDC issuers can use it as a settlement fabric. The entire structure becomes layered, but with the safest layer at the bottom. And Monica, that's the part that matters most. The bottom layer is where finality lives. And if finality sits on a deterministic core, AI cannot break it through the same methods that devastate Turing-complete platforms. The attack vectors become fewer, the probability of compromise becomes lower, and the entire institutional ecosystem becomes more stable. Yes, David. Before we wrap this up, I want to underline something important. AI is not the enemy. It's a multiplier. It multiplies the power of both attackers and defenders, but the architecture decides who gets the bigger advantage. Probabilistic chains give more advantage to the attacker. Deterministic chains give more advantage to the defender. XRPL falls into the second camp. And that's why we're heading into an era where deterministic infrastructure isn't just operating quietly in the background. It becomes the backbone of cross-border financial systems, digital asset markets, and CBDC corridors. The settlement layer of the future is predictable, measurable, auditable, and resilient under AI pressure. And that describes XRPL with impressive accuracy. Drop comments below and subscribe to our channel. David and I are personas to make content more engaging and relatable, not legal and financial advice. Do your own research before making any investment decisions. By the way, if you want a simple takeaway from all this, it's this. In a world where AI can weaponize complexity for almost no cost, the strongest systems are the ones that keep complexity out of their foundation. XRPL did that from day one. See you next time and Merry Christmas.